Good morning. I'm Bob Lynch, President and CEO of Americans for the Arts and the Americans for the Arts Action Fund. And I'm here uh, in the nation's capital, uh, up on the capital, with uh, a number of good advocates, um, artists, and friends who are here for National Arts Advocacy Day. National Arts Advocacy Day is um, a time when some 600 people from all around the country and uh, 2,400 people with us last night and thousands of people all across the country online advocate to their members of the people with us last for night and thousands of people and for arts education online. Um, one of the things that uh, we are playing off this year, and I'm getting a little feedback on it right now, but uh, one of the things that uh, we're trying out this year uh, is this wonderful Google Hangout, an opportunity for us uh, to connect with a number of people in different parts of, of the country, different parts of the city, and talk about the, the work of uh, arts advocacy uh, here in America. So before um, we jump into questions, I would like each of our uh, participants to introduce themselves, and uh, once we do that, uh, I'll get to some questions that have come in um, on uh, Twitter from across the country. So, Bob Lynch, Americans for the Arts. Yo-Yo Ma, cellist. I'm Matt Sorm, musician. And then joining us from other locations, Lisa. Hi, I'm uh, Lisa Phillips. I'm the CEO of Canada's Academy of Stage and Studio Arts, and I'm the author of the book, The Artistic Edge. Uh, Damien. Damien Wetzel, former dancer, principal dancer at New York City Ballet, and now a director and producer and uh, arts advocate. Uh, Gigi? Yes, I Sorry, Gigi. So that, that, that was Gigi from Big Thought. Um, we didn't hear it uh, here, but maybe others have heard it uh, as well. But uh, at least people can see you, and they know that that's you, Gigi, and we'll get that uh, uh, sound fixed. Hi, Gigi. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, uh, our friends, uh, Jason. Hi, Jason Vio, classical guitarist, and I teach at Curtis Institute of Music and Cleveland Institute of Music. And a member and of the Artist Works uh, Incorporated Music Academy. Super. And then I think last, Nathan. Hi, I'm Nathan Cole. I'm a violinist in the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I teach at the Colburn School there in, here in LA and also violin teacher for Artist Works. Great. Welcome, everybody, and thank you. Uh, so last night we had a spectacular presentation and performance. Um, with our, our friend Yo-Yo Ma and a number of his guests. And a question has come in from Jessica in New York City um, and uh, came by tweet and it addressed uh, your citation of a business journal finding that collaboration was a key element of any successful career path. So the question is what do you think about arts education? Uh, what about it that teaches collaboration? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that I've learned in the performing arts is that uh, in order to work with anybody on stage or backstage, you have to have a sense of trust. Otherwise, it doesn't work. The feel is bad. And so in order to trust somebody, you actually have to be able to have a sense, an empathetic sense of who they are and where, what, where they're coming from in the work. So I, I think that and collaboration means that you actually have to meet on a level playing field and wherever you are in life age or otherwise you have to be at the same ground level and develop that trust from which you can catch someone's musical phrasing or body or idea and then you can work with it and then you transfer it back and it's that type of thing that leads to innovation imagination creativity and flexi mental flexibility. Great. Um, a, a second question, this one from Matt, um, has come in from Christy in Florida. This one via email. And uh, the question is that you co-founded a local arts organization, Adopt the Arts, 
you just had a chance to talk about it with all, all of our gathered arts advocates. Um, and it, the point of it is to help get the arts back into school programs. But you know, in today's world, commercial world, business world, why was that? Why is that important? Well, I, I grew up in a in a public school environment, and I had nurtured you know music. Art, every, everything was around me at that time, and now the kids in the public school system just don't have it. And I, I got invited to a rally, and I got up in front of the school board and said my piece. And they claimed that I had something to do with the fact that they weren't going to cut the eighteen million dollars, and now LAUSD is a core subject again, K through six. I truly believe that K through six are the formative years for a child and the part of their life where they're really finding out who they're going to be in the future. So it, to take that art and that music away from them is, is imperative that we have that in their structured life on a daily basis because they're just learning who they are, they're getting inspired, they're be, you know, shaping themselves for the, for the future. And uh, as soon as I got involved, I don't have children of my own, but I always say, do you remember the scene from Close Encounters of the Third Kind where Richard Dreyfuss is carried off by the aliens? That's how I felt when I went down to the school. And for me, I <laughs> I used to I walk through the I, I walk through these different playgrounds and these kids come around me like I'm Mel Gibson and Mutiny on the Bounty, you know. I'm I'm like the, the, the guy that's just come to shore with all these great new attributes for them to be inspired. And I just love the joy and in their faces, and it just fills me up so much. I go down there to get a fix all the time, and I, and now we have moved into 25 schools, and the idea is to get other celebrities and people of brands and companies involved to get that feeling of giving back and knowing that the public school system is our community and our future, and we can't leave any kid behind, and there's so many gems in there. And we have to be able to inspire these children to grow. And just one more thing. On a state level, we spend $7,000 per child. We spend $55,000 per prisoner in the prison system. That has to change. 5% of the world population has 25% of the prisoners in prison systems of the world. We need to educate our children now, and arts is so important and instrumental in their growing and expanding their minds. Great. Um, I see another question that's come in for Damien, uh, and this is from Stephanie from uh, South Carolina, who tweeted this question. Um, both you and uh, and Yo-Yo are involved in an initiative called Turnaround Arts, uh, with a lot of similarities to what uh, the program Matt was just talking about as well. Turnaround Arts. Uh, of the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. So, Damien, can you tell us about the goals of that program? Well, in a, in a very real sense, the goal is to, to put the arts to work in some of the nation's most challenged schools. Uh, these are schools that have been habitually failing uh, on you know, standardized testing and all kinds of other measures. They're extremely uh, challenging circumstances for the principals, for the teachers, down to the students. And the goal of this is to show how the arts can be a part of turning around those situations. And it's really what Matt said. There are these moments, especially if you think about, you know, from K to 6, where a child can either choose to participate and to even have a chance to step up to the bat or not. And the arts are absolutely essential in that moment. When when we think about the arts, all too often we think that these are the, a moment that it might be nice for a child. It, it, honestly, of course it's nice. That's not really the point. The point is that it's hard. It's difficult. It's work. It's something that is rewarding because it's a challenge. So you go into a school that's, that's having trouble and you have kids that are disengaged. They're not actually able to participate in, in the learning process. They don't have uh, a stake in the, in the game. And what the arts can do in these circumstances is to put them into that moment, that learning moment, that passion-driven moment where they're going to be able to absorb what they're being taught, or it's going to mean something to them personally. And uh, again, it's, it is the eyes. You can see when the eyes are alive in a child, when they're uh, available to learn, when they've been engaged, when they are uh, engaging their imagination, and it has the possibility of creativity. And that's really what Turnaround Arts is. It's, it's a chance in a wide variety of different types of schools, from Lanevere, Montana, to Roxbury, Massachusetts,
Massachusetts, all the way to, to Oregon, all over the place, different circumstances, but all challenged. And it's how the arts can actually be that adaptable force of good in education. Thanks, Damon. So uh, here's a related question. Um, I'm going to give it back to, to Yo-Yo, but either Damien or, or Matt could also jump in. And it has to do, it was asked of, uh, of me by somebody here in DC who uh, uh, knew we were doing this. And they wanted to know if, um, in addition to the general descriptions that you've just given, if you yourselves have had any specific experiences, um, maybe what you saw one child, one specific child, um, or one specific uh, um, experience of an outcome with your, um, and Yo Yo, you did two turnaround um, uh, schools that you worked with. Uh, any, anything as an example? Well, <clears throat> I think uh, one of the places we went to was um, Orchard Gardens in, in Roxbury. And, and I think the effect of a collective of people, starting with the principal, Andrew Bott, and, uh, and fantastic teachers and teaching artists and, and arts groups that come in, Andrew Bott decided uh, in essentially a failing school that we're just going to have lots of art in, in everything, arts integration. And so you walk into the school, immediately you see the spirit, you see the students work, you know, right in the lobby, uh, whether, and then there's, there's a pyramid, a corridor was turned into a pyramid, and inside was all the, you know, so Egypt, how far is it from our minds to think about ancient Egypt? Suddenly, you walk into the very living places of, you know, an Egyptian king, pharaoh. That kind of learning, it brings everything from far away into your immediate tactile environment that you can see, touch, feel, construct. That's this kind of uh, learning that takes the abstract into the immediate. And that's when you can start to play with all the subjects. And, and that's, that's an incredible. And, and it actually, and in that environment, Yo Yo, remember how when we walked into that school, there were, as you said, artwork all around. And, and Andrew Bott, the principal, explained how several years before we would have walked in and seen security guards in the hallways. And instead, we had a hallway that literally was a reproduction of a hallway in a pyramid. And I thought to myself immediately, if this had been a school that I went to, it wouldn't have lasted a day because kids would have, you know, messed <laughs> it up, torn it down, something. He's built a culture of respect through art. Yeah. And it's about respect for each other, for each other's work, and about the fact that somebody is actually making something. It's, it's tangible. It's not theory. It's, it's real. And it went from, from visual artworks to sculptures to music to, a, 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 to dance works. Uh, and there are these, th these, these peripherals that go along with this. So it's never as simple uh, uh, as simply we're going to teach you know, an art form. It's complexity after complexity of what, what is gained in that educational environment that goes on through life. Um, I was thinking about you know, the, the question about a specific kid. And I remember on one project that uh, we worked on through Silk Road Connect, Yo-Yo's program in the New York City Public Schools, the task was for a year-end performance, quote unquote, which they would develop themselves based on what they learned all year long, which is a lot to ask, to say, you know, you guys make it up. We'll help you, but you guys make it up, and we're going to put it in front of an audience. And really the task there for them was, can you do it? Can you actually step in front of an audience? And I remember one kid in particular uh, from Brooklyn who, in rehearsal, again and again, spoke quietly. He was the one you had to say, no, you have to project. There's going to be an audience. And I remember the moment when he finished his line and he decided to punctuate it uh, with a backhand spring in place. <laughs> and he got an enormous round of applause. And you realize he made a breakthrough. He said, I can, I, can, I can speak, actually. He said, I have a voice. I have a voice. And it was an incredible castle just to see this, this can work. That's great. So, similar to uh, the idea I have with Adopt the Arts, we have eight schools here marked next year for celebrities in Los Angeles to come in. Slash is on my board, Jane Lynch from Glee, Billy Bob Thornton, Juliette Lewis. They're all going to take a school. And what's beautiful about it, I, when I first went to Rosewood and adopted Rosewood Avenue, there was probably 10 parents in the Christmas 
show where the kids performed. Uh, and as soon as we got the program together, the following year, it was two shows sold out, standing room only. Okay, so that gives you a bit of an idea. Not only do the kids see that someone cares about them, but they're, they're going home to their parents and they're saying, hey, this guy Matt Sorm or Yo-Yo Ma came to my school, Mommy. And Mommy goes, excuse me? <laughs> and all of a sudden, the parents are engaged and being more part of, you know, just more than dro dropping their kid off at school, right? They're, now they're engaging and the parents are, are really excited and the kids are going home. My program is called The Circle. So it's, it's incorporating... Uh, art and music and history and culture. So basically in the third grade, my kids already know who Miles Davis is, and John Coltrane. They go home and they, mommy, I just learned about this guy named John Coltrane who wrote a song called Love Supreme, right? So they're getting all these beautiful messages through this beautiful music and Bob Marley, One Love, you know, songs that have shaped our culture and shaped, you know, history. So, and you know, and on the classical front, you know, Johann Sebastian Bach to Igor Stravinsky in, in the fourth and fifth grade, they already know these names where some of their parents might not even not know their name and where they come from. Vienna, Austria, and the Louvre, and Paris. And this year, we're incorporating animal welfare into an art program. We've, we've partnered with the International Federation of Animal Welfare and we have 20 schools drawing elephants. And we've shown them a video about what's going on in Africa with the ivory trade. And the kids are learning about what they can do to be a better citizen and to help with the wildlife in the world and you know the eco uh, system that, and everything that's going on with that. So we're incorporating different things. And then the, the kids that have the best art will go on to a calendar for the International Federation of Welfare around the world. Uh, animal welfare around the world. So we're doing different incorporations of things that kids learn a lot of different subjects. So it's great. That's super. Um, I, I'm going to go to Lisa Phillips and uh, we've been giving some examples of actual artist programs around the country. <clears throat> uh, Lisa has authored a book called The Artistic Edge and wondering if you can tell us about the seven skills that your book says children learn from all of this. Sure. Um, so the seven skills in my book are actually leadership skills that I believe children need most to be successful in their life and their future careers. So the seven skills that the book focuses on are creativity, confidence, problem solving, dreaming big, accountability and relationship building, communication, and adaptability. So I've been an arts educator for over 16 years, and I really believe the arts is the best vehicle to be teaching those crucial skills. And I'm going to give you an example in a second of how it does that. Um, but first, I want to talk about why these leadership skills are so important for the future success of our young people. So a trend I've actually really been seeing lately is children are growing up with underdeveloped leadership skills and they're actually skills that they need to have a competitive edge in life. So competition for jobs is very much increasing and because of that a university degree doesn't really guarantee a successful career. It used to, uh, and but it sort of, you know, become what a high school diploma once was, which is sort of the bare minimum of entry into the workforce. So there's also millions of jobs that get outsourced to other countries, so the job market has very much become global. And we need to have our children developing a different set of skills that will set them apart from their competition. And I believe those skills are creativity and leadership. And that's what my book, uh, The Artistic Edge, is all about. And let me just give you a quick example of how, for example, improvising in theater actually teaches the skills of confidence and adaptability. So, for example, when we improvise, we get a chance to practice thinking on our feet, we're jumping into a situation where we don't know what's going to happen. So when we're doing theater improv, there's no script. And you have to learn to have the confidence to sort of go into an unpredictable situation. And that's very much what happens in life. So if children have the chance to practice those skills when they're young, they become competent in them. And through 
competency, they actually develop a level of confidence that, that transfers into other areas of their life. So it allows them to take positive risks, to adapt to changes when they come, to be innovative in their thinking, and to really sort of go for their dreams. So that's really my message of my book, The Artistic Edge, is to talk to, you know, sort of challenge adults to think about um, how arts education is that most ideal vehicle to be teaching leadership skills, uh, especially those that are just so necessary for the success and future of our young people. Great. Actually, some wonderful echoes in your talk uh, last night. I'm wondering, uh, Gigi, uh, can we hear you now? Can you? I think so. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yes. Good. So, um, a question for for you. Um, you're the uh, director of a model program in Dallas, Big Thought, and I had the uh, opportunity just a few weeks ago to see you honored uh, in Texas for the work of Big Big Thought with the Texas Medals um, for the Arts. Um, so, the question: uh, Our panelists have spoken about their own involvement in the arts. Your organization has very successfully uh, partnered um, community-based organizations with local public schools. And, and it's one of the biggest and most successful in the country. So what do you see as the necessary elements of that success, of a successful arts education program? Um, I think to make sure all the children in our communities are receiving these great programs that are being talked about here, those wonderful experiences that illuminate learning um, and give kids the skills they need to be successful in life, we have to pull together um, our artists, our universities, our businesses, our school system, and our cities um, to coordinate all of our assets um, into our classroom. So I think um, one of the most important things is, is really deep partnerships partnerships with individuals like uh, Matt's talking about um, in schools, partnerships where schools are open to the community coming in and providing some of that enrichment and on specialists in schools, mobilizing in our communities the will to make sure that none of our children are left behind. And often that is, is a um, issue of joining forces and raising the issue, being a strong activists and advocates for what we believe is important in our schools. Um, and I think that's the really important element in scaling, making it possible that it isn't just one school or five schools or ten schools, but all of our schools have robust, uh, high quality experiences for kids year over year as they're growing up in our systems. I think that's what we should shoot for and I think we can only get there together. Uh, business the arts community, the education community, coming together around that. Great. Uh, actually, uh, another question that came in, and it's a segue, um, when you take all of that good work and then you have to make a presentation of some kind to a decision maker. Um, so, Yo-Yo, uh, you're going to be um, some uh, dusty called Steam Brains on Twitter, is asking uh, you to discuss the importance um, of not only including the arts in STEM education, uh, but uh, today you'll be meeting with the newly formed Congressional STEAM Caucus. What is your message to them? What's a, what's a, what's a good way to motivate? Well, it, it seems to me that um, many of the skills that uh, Lisa was talking about and, and uh, in terms of what children need in order to succeed. I think so many of the skills that she talks about are actually best uh, modeled through the arts. And I think, so I, I'm thinking that the STEAM idea or turning STEM to STEAM actually is one way to get um, all of what the children need. So from critical thinking to empathetic thinking, to flexible thinking, uh, to imaginative thinking. What better way to develop the imagination than through uh, improv theater, than through uh, drawing an elephant and then relating it to uh, the ivory trade? What better way to uh, to have to recite a creed in school and turn it into a musical creed that everybody has 
writing and creating and singing every day. So I think it's it gives the arts give the Velcro and the memory that actually attaches uh, the core curriculum that we all have to go through. But how many of us remember our algebra and trigonometry <laughs> and chemistry and physics classes that was fun. from high school? <laughs> you know, Let's go to algebra. Exactly. But if you actually have something that ties it all together, you actually then will constantly find uses for it. We talk creativity, but creativity actually means uh, essentially the basis of creativity is connected. So for the child that is not connected to many, many things, you cannot say, okay, now we're going to teach creativity. You actually have to connect to everything around you, and then you can pick from what you are learning and to say, oh, I get it. Then you become self-motivated. Then you're not saying, I have to pass this test so that I can forget it the next day. So I think there's a big flaw in our system that we can actually bridge through Steve. So with all of this, um, I, I'd like to bring in our, our um, Google Hangout music panelists uh, yes. and ask uh, Jason and Nathan to just comment on what we've been uh, talking about. So um, Jason, you first. Well, I mean, we have, Nathan and I are part of a, of a company, Artist Works Incorporated, that, that brings uh, music training directly uh, to people's homes uh, through, through subscription service. And we can, it's a, basically a one-on-one -on -one training, but really one-to-many, uh, because we, what is created through uh, this video exchange is a, kind of a one-to-many thing where a, a virtual uh, learning environment uh, and continually expanding environment uh, happens. Now it's more specific to the training of, of, uh, of a, a musical instrument, um, but what I, but I mean just kind of jumping off of what Lisa and, and Yo-Yo and, 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 and we're all talking about here, I think, you know, ours of course is, uh, this, this uh, school that we're part of is more of a specialized kind of thing, but I think the point that I wanted to make is that I think there's a misconception out there that if we, um, that, that public and federal funding for the arts, uh, uh, arts education in schools is trying to uh, fund or uh, uh, something for a very small percentage of people that may excel at the arts. And I think these points, uh, which of course is not the point. I don't think any of us believe that, or or, or that every single student in every public school has to be, you know, uh, think of it as a professional uh, thing. I think we have to erase this misconception that arts education is really for something like that, but that it's really for what it does. Is it better than perhaps anything else? It does train uh, discipline, self-discipline, responsibility. Uh, accountability to others, especially when playing chamber music, and and develops tremendous social skills as well, and uh, and and all these things that we're talking about to create a more fully functioning uh, member of society and a successful uh, professional in the workforce. So, um, but uh, we see uh, just in our direct one to one, and also one to many, of course. With that, I, my school has over two hundred students uh, from fifteen countries around the world what our our environment creates this community that that these uh, the students of my classical guitar school can, of course can interact with each other but a lot of these people are getting the fulfillment the the personal fulfillment of of achieving uh working with with me on helping them to say play to complete a piece of music and play it all the way through and it's giving them that sense of self-worth in a, in a way that not a lot of uh, things can do. And so it's a great, I mean, I, I had to get, it took me a while to get my, my head wrapped around how like awesome uh, this place is that, that we're working in, but it's, uh, uh, it all, it's, uh, it's just another tool uh, that, uh, that we can use for things like this. But, uh, but that self-worth uh, of the individual and that fulfillment that they get from working in something in the arts, they, you know, is a very, I think, a very important thing. I think when I heard 
Yo 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 Ma's speech last night, it actually made me think that putting the A on the fourth letter, I was thinking we should put the A at the top and call it a stem. Should make it grow. A is the most important thing of anything. It the, the way he spoke about creativity and the new world and the way CEOs, seventy five percent of them are looking for creative minds, I think that's that's the top of the list. Yes. You know, the rest of it's cool, but we better go to the top of the list. Let's not say, hey, incorporate us. Let's no. get like ahead of that. This is bigger than than incorporating us. <laughs> Is beyond important. This is number one. This is yeah. essential. This is essential to our uh, our future. Uh, we yeah. have to be able to argue uh, uh, this and 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 convince people that this is essential to our future as uh, our for our economy. I mean, it, I'm a, I'm a proven case. Okay, I'm a high school graduate, but now I have two entrepreneurial businesses. Believe it or not, I have a vitamin company. I have two iPhone applications. I have my own app. Okay, I graduated high school, but learning through music and business, the business right. of music, traveling the world has taught me to be a businessman, right? And having a creative mind to look towards the future and what's coming and to constantly be reinventing. That is the thing that our kids learn through music and art. They learn, wow, hey, have you seen that artist Banksy? Have you seen Shepard Fairey? Have you seen this, have you seen that? And all the kids, I always ask the kids, what's the coolest music? And they tell me, I don't know, I'm old. <laughs> they tell me, what's Ooh, it? Yeah, I'm old. No. <laughs> kids tell me, I want to keep my ear to the street. That's where I came from. What's going on? You know, they're way ahead of us. It's also okay. about focus. So, you know, Jason was talking about the discipline factor, which is so true. The idea of being able to follow through with something, to take responsibility uh, through the arts, whether it's theater or music or dance or visual arts, it, it, there's a process that requires putting, putting yourself out there. But it also, it does incorporate into any school day. Some of the things that I've heard from teachers over and over again is that when kids actually are engaging in those activities during the school day, they come back to class and they're able to focus better. And I think that that's a particular issue today, in 2013. How can we focus with all of the distractions that you know, kids are faced with today, all the electronics and everything? When is the moment when they can actually focus on something for an extended period of time? Where is that long note that it's not just being, okay, we're going to move on? And uh, again, the arts are integral to that. Interesting, like, like last night when we were watching Yo Yo Ma play, when he played, that for that moment, I wasn't thinking about what was coming up on my Twitter or what, what my emails were saying or if my phone was going to ring. I was in the moment with Yo Yo Ma's beautiful sonic majesty, and I was completely transcended. That's the only shape. That can make that happen in this world. That's a that's an important point. Is the is the act of actually being in the present moment, and the arts has a way of of really that. And going back to uh, you know your uh, your point about focus as well, being in the present moment is an important thing. And I think a lot of people spend their awareness being in either in the past or or oftentimes too much in the in the future. The, the future tense. So it's another great uh, uh, thing that that the arts can do. But uh, just going back to your point is about the that stick to itiveness uh, of actually seeing something all the way through a dance routine, a piece of music. The the response, the sort of self responsibility that you that you develop and that discipline to see it all the way through is an incredibly important life skill uh, to not just give up halfway through. And everything in the arts is uh, with with uh, with good teaching and teachers is, is is what teaches that and instills that in young people. Nathan, right. you want to add anything? Well, yes, I just I'd love to say. Speaking of yo-yo again, um, you know, when I was a kid, and I went to public school in Kentucky, and you know, I had uh, your. I, it was first records. I, I was around for the end of records, and then cassette tapes. And um, you know, I listened to those. And you were, you know, a far away mentor. Me being a violinist, and um, you know, when I 
advanced in my career and eventually got to the point where I could play with you as I've now gotten to do many times on orchestra stages. I mean, it was just a dream come true and to, to meet you and hear you in person, but that wouldn't have happened without the people in my schools who would say, hey, you should, here's this tape, here's this record of Yo-Yo Ma, you've got to hear this because it's, it's, it would interest you. This is really what you're doing. And so it was the, the mentor from afar, but also the mentors that I had right there with me. Uh, and those were essential. I think that's what we're all talking about too. And now I have the chance with Artist Works to hopefully be that mentor for people that even that I can't see, and they may be all around the world thanks to the internet. Um, but if that, that personal connection with music and what you were just speaking about, Matt, yeah, to, to hear that, to be in the presence of it, that's what really makes the difference. So uh, we need to bring this to a close, even though um, I've got another 20, diff uh, 20 questions from <laughs> Twitter and folks all across the country. Um, but in the last 30 seconds, I'm going to give it to Yo-Yo if there's anything you'd like to say to wrap up. Well, I, I think for what everybody has said, I, I, I'd like to say one thing, problem solving, uh, consecutive problem solving. How many kids get a chance to solve problems in class uh, that are at the moment? Not problem sets that someone gave them, right. but that what they perceive to be problems, and then they, you know, whether it's Matt and his business, or Jason in terms of trying to gain confidence through a piece of music, or getting to write a book. You know, it's like, how do you, those things you do when you're, you write a book when you're an adult, but if you're learning something in music, or dance, or theater, you are actually solving hundreds of problems in order and getting feedback on it while you're doing it. And without a mentor saying, this is every step, this is what you need to do. So it's not about finding the right answer, but it's actually right. about solving problems that fit the moment. And then having to integrate, and then, then having to integrate all of those various solved problems into a whole is a huge, you know, a huge thing. So with that, I'm going to say thank you to Yo-Yo uh, and Matt and Damien and Lisa and G Gigi and Jason and Nathan. And I'm thanking all of the people who have participated across the country. And we're off to visit with uh, Congress people to bring this message to them and uh, help America. Thank you. Guys. <laughs>